And uh, we have the next talk from Elias Neymar, who would be talking about better product development. Hello, Elias. Over to you. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my talk is going to be more meta compared to previously more technical talks. So I'm going to uh, talk about uh, how hypothesizing can help you uh, in a better product development. And uh, speaking about our use case, I'm leading personalization and recommendations at Olex Group, which is an online marketplace operating in like more than 25 countries with uh, 350 million of uh, monthly active users. Uh, and that's how a typical development flow looked for us. Uh, so it all started with the idea and went to the implementation. Uh, obviously, with some like cycles and iterations in between for fast feedback and so on. But generally, you take an idea, you implement it. And like we started noticing that it's kind of bad for data products because like uh, we're doing personalization recommendations. And it's uh, our bread and butter. So uh, in data products, success doesn't depend on like a code system quality so much. But in it's hard to predict results uh, from the initial project planning. And uh, also, we noticed that it's kind of optimizes for wrong things. So often, customers is being in, uh, ignored and like uh, only included in the process of evaluation only when the implementation is done. So like, okay, we need to solve it. What do we do? Obviously, uh, go on Twitter. And uh, like there, I saw that actually we're not alone, and uh, people are really struggling with it as well. And we can see that it's kind of really scary uh, to spend uh, six to twelve months of building something that is wrong. And then in another case, we see that a uh, company uh, has learned about the project uh, from the other company announcement and still was able to ship this project faster uh, than the initial company. So something is definitely wrong here. And like we, OK, what do we do? We try to optimize it, to uh, introduce more steps, obviously, and make it more colorful, which is uh, also uh, equally important. So this uh, flow starts with a hypothesis. Why hypothesis? Uh, because like hypothesis is something that doesn't have certainty in itself. It can be right, it can be wrong. Uh, while like as opposite of that, the idea is something that uh, if you say idea is good or bad, because you will need to uh, identify ideas to work on, so you will need to somehow judge them, uh, and it might hurt your openness, like openness in your team, as well as like user story, it, like presumes that we know our users, which is kind of not even humble to say, but yeah, it's a uh, often uh, that doesn't happen. Then you take your hypothesis from the first step and you try to design a prototype with this hypothesis as fast as possible. Uh, so, and by this, like uh, you really, really, really cut all the features that doesn't help you to improve things, uh, to prove things that uh, you want with your hypothesis. And here are some uh, kind of famous prototypes like Apple One, uh, Google Glass, for example. Yeah, it, it, it's, it was literally made of uh, tape and uh, netbook. netbook. And uh, the interesting case here, for example, is Yandex Navigator, where instead of like developing uh, features in, in an application, it was cheaper to put a person with a stick and with a paper, and then uh, when appropriately to put these papers on top of the application uh, to see if, uh, for example, these notifications were useful. And then uh, when you have a prototype, which is a really, really like a fast and small one, you don't want to have this prototype in your ivory tower. You really want to go to the real world and collect real feedback from your real users because like not code and systems and infrastructure is your medium, but actually real people. And this one, uh, like it, everybody talks about like learnings, we need to optimize for learnings, but not only learnings, this like uh, allows you to avoid costly mistakes and how exactly? So, because like at every step, at every step, at prototype, at experiment, you can go back to the hypothesis. You don't need to finish your flow. You need you can go back and adjust your hypothesis. For example, if prototype didn't work and prove that it's going to be too costly to implement, or experiment didn't prove uh, much results. Okay, you just go and adjust your hypothesis. And this short circuit is actually like one of the greatest features of this flow uh, that it kind of allows you to improve your time to value and improve with this potential savings where you can short circuit something that is not useful for users. You can short circuit from the beginning, but then the ones that will go to the production, the ones that you will invest in would be really features that user need. And like there you can really double down uh, 
having all the results from your experiments, having all the information, like a considering cost of maintenance, you can really see if you're gonna like proceed with this feature up until the end to put it into production, or uh, you will go for another hypothesis and uh, repeat the cycle again. And uh, this one also allows you to hedge your risks in this sense, because each consequent step is, is kind of uh, more expensive and bigger and uh, like uh, avoiding these unnecessary steps will allow you like it will allow to save some money so this flow doesn't tell you how to build your project instead of guides you into like what is the most meaningful thing to work at any particular moment yeah and we found that it, it allowed us to maximize learning build a common dictionary within a team and also optimize our time to value yeah if if you have any questions or you just want to chat uh uh, here like drop me a message on slack or linkedin or whatever and uh, thank you very much